of all the tools you've got available in Affinity Photo for shaping your tone or color balance, curves are probably the single most powerful one. So let's go on up. They're in the adjustment layers panel and let's click and let's get it. Now, some people think curves are a little bit difficult and that's maybe for two reasons. One is that it's difficult to conceptualize what curves actually do. And the other is that they can be a little bit difficult to control sometimes, but we'll take a look at both those issues right now. The first one, it's difficult to figure out what they're actually doing. Well, no, it's actually quite simple. Look, here's our curves dialog box and you can see I've got a histogram showing me all the different tones in my picture. And also you have this line, this diagonal line going from the bottom left right up to the top right. That's our curve. And yes, I know it's a straight line at the moment, but the thing about it is you can put a point on the straight line and you can drag the point around to create, look at that, a curve. Okay, so what have I done? Take a look at these lines in the background. I've got 25%, 50%, 75%. And also I have going up the side, 25%, 50%, 75%. If you take a look, I've got all my tones laid out on the bottom. I have completely black at this end. I've got no very dark tones. I start to get some tones around, what do you think, what, maybe 12? At 12% 12 brightness, I start to get just one or two tones. Then I get my tone curve. This is my 50% brightness marker. And we're carrying going up. This is my 75% marker. And you can see that I don't have any tones brighter than 75% in my picture and we're carrying going all the way up to 100%. So there's my tones, 0% black, all the way going up through 50% bright, all the way up to 100% on the far right. But I put a curve, and as you can see, that affects the tone, like this. Let's take that up to about there. And now what's happening is every tone in my picture is being affected by this curve. Let's take a look. All the tones which started out at 50% bright, and that's around this point here, go at the 50% brightness line until you hit where the curve is, and then go across to this point here. All the pixels that are 50% bright in my picture are now this brightness level, which is 75%. But this curve has affected all the other tones in my picture. Let's take a look at all the tones in my picture which started out at 25% bright here. Go up the 25% line until you hit the curve, then go across to this point here. So now all the tones which started out at 25% bright are now, what, what do you think, 40% bright now? And let's take a look at the 75% line. All the tones which were 75% bright in my picture, go up the 75% line until you hit the curve, then go across. And imagine you can read off the value here. All the tones which started out at 75% bright are now, what, about 90% bright? That's what the curve does. Every single pixel in your picture has a certain brightness. And if you want to give it a percentage, it's from 0%, which is completely black, to 100%, which is completely white. And they all start out sitting on this bottom line here, and then they all make their way up until they hit the tonal curve, go across, and that's your new brightness. Okay, well, that's nice, but so far, all we've done really is just adjusted the overall brightness. But the thing about curves and what makes them so powerful is you can have more than one point on your curve. For example, I can put another curve here and I can drag it down like this. And I can take this one to here. And now we have something which is known as a classic S-curve. And what an S-curve does is increase the contrast. If you take a look, you've got our little red line. That was how our curve started out. If our curve was lying along that red line, you wouldn't see any changes. But we've changed the curve because we've added points. Down the darker end, well, we've just made all of these darker values even darker because we've added the point and we've dragged the curve down at that point. Look, all these values that used to be 25% come up to... The curve come across now those values are now about what well they used to be 25 percent bright now they're 18 percent bright so they're darker but if you take a look at the top end all these values which used to be about 75 percent bright if you come up now to where you hit the curve and go across they're now 87 90 percent bright they're brighter and so an s curve gives you more contrast and also that is a rule take a look at this section of the curve can you see how it is steeper than this 45 degree red line in the background if the section of curve is steeper than this 45 degree line, you're going to get more contrast between these two points. Let's do it the other way around. If the section of curve is shallower in this case than the 45 degree baseline, 
you're going to get less contrast in between these two points. And now we're starting to take a look at some of the difficulties. Curves can be quite difficult to control. I mean, take a look at the picture. It looks terrible. We've created some very dull areas in between these two points. In fact, look, I'll show you what can look terrible. You see this little section of the curve here? It's a straight line. That means any pixels that lie in between, say, this point and this point have exactly the same brightness as each other. And if you take a look at the picture, look, you can see these large areas of a dull mid gray. In fact, you can really mess things up. Look, now I've got a negative curve. It's going the wrong way. So you're getting these weird kind of effects here. Now that can be nice from an artistic point of view if you want to do 60s psychedelia and stuff like that. But if all I want to do is enhance a photograph, that is not a good look. So I have my one curve active here. I'm going to press my delete key to get rid of it. I'll select this one and press my delete key to get rid of that. Now here's another thing. You can take the endpoints and you can move them in like this. Like in the case of this, I've moved the endpoints so they meet the start and the end of the various tones in my histogram. That means now I have a spread of completely black to completely white in my picture. I'm getting more contrast. And then I can put a midpoint to control that overall contrast. Now at the moment that is a little bit similar to levels because look I have three points, a black point, a midpoint and a white point and so it's doing something rather similar but I can have as many points as I want on this curve like this and so I can fine tune to a very precise amount the dark and light in my photo and now let me show you a little bit of a gotcha. I'm going to delete my point here and for this point here, I think, great, I can really fine tune the brighter area. So I start moving around like this. And I'm so pleased with what I'm doing down the top end. That's great. But look what's happening to the curve down at the bottom section. As I move around, that bottom section of curve is also moving. That is not a good look. So you use something called anchor points. Now, in the case of this, supposing I want to tweak around the upper tones of my picture, but I don't want to affect the lower tones, in which case I might put in a point here, and then I'm just going to leave it there. If I now move around the top part, you'll see because I have this little point here, it's stopping the curve from moving in the lower parts. It's an anchor point. So I can now start to tweak the top area of my picture like this with a minimal effect on the lower reaches. As for this picture, there's no colour in here. It's just a tonal study. So if you're experimenting with this, then it's whatever look you think looks best, I think. But there's also the fact that you can use curves to do colour work as well as tonal work. And we'll take a look at that in the next video in this reference series.